Hi, everybody. Welcome back to RVA Sec 2022. We're from Virginia. Chuck Harrell is Critical TV.com. My next guest, what's your name, sir? It's Chris Wall. Name of your company? Critical Fault. And is it criticalfault.com? It is. All right, excellent. And uh, what's your title? I am the Chief Technology Officer and Co founder of Critical Fault. And what's the last part I saw in there? Offensive Security Manager. <laughs> I... Now, I've been called that in my career, offensive. <laughs> I don't think it's the same thing, though, is it? Not quite the same thing. <laughs> no, it's about the same. Tell it's us. about the same. You <laughs> cause problems. That's right. Tell us what you guys do. Uh, sure. So, uh, Critical Fault. Bring your mic up a little more for me. There we, there we go. Yeah. Uh, Critical Fault Cybersecurity Company, uh, based out of uh, Oklahoma, so Oklahoma City. Uh, we mainly focus on uh, offensive security, but we also focus on digital forensics. So uh, oh. being that uh, we hire hackers, we think like hackers, we know what hackers are up to. Right. So interesting story about digital forensics. Uh, I had a case at Fox where somebody stole some recorders when I was a brand new security manager. I hired a guy in Access 2.0 to look at the hard drives. We could search five sectors at a time when end case could only do one. <laughs> and we contributed to their public code to make it do it. So forensics is where it's at. I mean, that's a, it is. And, and you know, you don't hear enough about forensics anymore. Unfortunately, it's still, it's still it's happening. There. Crimes still happen, incidents, breaches, yeah. they're, they're I mean, still almost, happening. Let me ask you this. Can you get from a hard drive in a network information or clues about an attack? I've never really thought about it that way. People are like, oh, well, it's in the memory. It's this, we, we saw where it came from. but. Does it help you to do the forensics on that kind of thing? It really does. Interesting. Uh, actually, we just gave a talk earlier today. Okay. Um, uh, that was reconstructing an attack on a web application right. from a digital forensics perspective. Oh, so we could uh, we could actually look at where uh, you work your way backwards, as you know. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. You see what they did. You can walk your way backwards and understand. Okay, they used this payload. They came in through the maybe the front door, the back door, who knows, and that they came in, we can see exactly where that happened. Now, is it more difficult nowadays? I, uh, this is back in the day when everything started. I used to do cyber investigations for the studios when nobody was doing that, by the way. And I'd go to the IT guy and say, give me all your logs. What do you mean? I said, oh, you know, I want your network logs. Well, we don't turn that on. Why? Well, it takes up too much memory. Okay, but it's information we need to have, right? Is that still happening? <laughs> log log storage is still a bane for most still. IT groups. It is still a How bane. Bizarre. It is. You would hope that there's beautiful logs ready to go. Yes. Sim Sim has fixed a lot of that, right. but still, oftentimes you walk into organizations like, hey, let me see the proxy logs. Well, we don't record those. Oh my god. What do god. you mean? So you make the best out of what you have. Oh my god, that's unbelievable. All right, now oh, looks like my my questions disappeared there. Sorry about. It. This is what happens on live TV sometimes, everybody. <laughs> All right. Uh, how did you get into the industry? So I've been in the industry, I got in as, I mean, young, uh, uh, fresh faced, almost 20 years ago that, uh, you know, fixing computers, started getting into network admin, then uh, uh, 10 years, a decade of my life uh, spent as a network admin, which is very valuable experience. Right. Today, that's extremely valuable. Yeah. But, I really wanted to be in development. That was the piece that I really wanted to be in. And so I jumped into uh, uh, the realm of development and I was uh, writing code, slinging code for different uh, um, different groups. I was just a freelancer, you know, I was just building right. uh, applications. I was terrible at it. Creating all kinds of vulnerabilities all over <laughs> the place. And these are same vulnerabilities that a lot of developers <laughs> right. make. I mean, when, you, when everybody hits the same Stack Exchange uh, uh, page, they're going to have all the same problems. Right. In, fact, in fact, that's why most SSH keys are so terrible, because there's one Stack Exchange page that everybody seems to hit, and it's terrible. Yeah. You know? uh, so I was making all the same mistakes, all the same vulnerabilities, and I was aware of these vulnerabilities and obsessed with trying to plug the holes. And I started trying to, to do different things. This was before I even knew what a nonce was. And then I started giving talks about how I introduced vulnerabilities, what I did to fix those vulnerabilities. And that led to me getting offered a job as a penetration tester, and the rest is history. And you started your own company. How did you we do did. that? We did. We uh, did. So, uh, so not everybody gets this opportunity. Um, starting a company is expensive. Oh, yeah. And uh, especially if you're a person who lives day to day, you know, m maybe I don't say paycheck to paycheck, but a lot of Americans unfortunately well, that's do. Where it goes, so, yeah. But yeah, when you're you have to feed yourself, it's hard to start a business that's not going to feed you for a year to two to three or sometimes even longer than right. that. So we had the rare opportunity. Um, a gentleman who is now one of our co-founders, uh, he had lots of Dogecoin that he bought as a joke back in 2014. <laughs> 
And it was on a laptop that was then uh, hit with, uh, I can't remember which one, server ransomware virus, I believe it yeah. was. So he didn't know how to turn it on. It didn't boot. It didn't do anything. They, we had the uh, the wallet files on there. And it's like, I don't I don't know how to get to them. It's, it's probably gone. You know, it's, it's a lost cause. Like, do you know what I do for a living? So this was about two years ago that yeah. I came to him and said, hey, give me the laptop. Let me look and see what we can do. Sure enough, after about... 8 million different guesses. We, I mean, we got the wallet keys, yeah. we got them extracted, we were able to get a full like forensic image so we could keep trying and uh, uh, work on decrypting these. I mean, he knew, kind of knew the password, this was from 2014, Okay. but within about 8 million guesses of different permutations, different typos, different versions of the passwords that he remembered, we finally unlocked it, which he became almost a half millionaire overnight. No kidding. Oh my god. And That's there a fantastic was fantastic story. There was a little bit of a finder's fee in there, you know, sure. help helping <laughs> helping him uh, uh, recover this and we were able to use that <laughs> uh, to basically found the company and uh, oh uh, he's god, in a way amazing. better spot. He yeah. dug himself out of a huge amount of debt and uh, that's huge for him, but uh, therefore we were able to start a company and what a great not story. worry about yeah. you know running out of money right. in our first year or so. That's fantastic. Tell me more about your lecture. Sure. Uh, so uh, today uh, we spoke about uh, digital forensics and reconstructing a web application attack uh, against modern applications. And the whole point of the conversation was, yeah, we can find this information. We can fi figure out who's doing what on a system you know, v from various log sources. But that's the key point from various sources. Right. It's coming from all over the place. Modern web application development is all over the place. That there's, you could have something in your CI CD pipeline. You could have something in a, a repository. You could have some sort of like, I don't know, let's pick on Slackbot or something that, that plays a role. You have so many different inception points. Somebody can throw something in Jira. We had a talk yesterday on, um, on uh, phishing using Jira or other SaaS based tools to do social engineering from. And that's still a place that I have to go and I have to learn uh, or figure out, backtrack right. my way to figure out where did things happen. And this is a piece that is becoming harder and harder to figure out where did things come from. And like you throw a proxy in there, you throw uh, uh, any kind of VPN where you can hide the source. That makes, makes it much harder to find the origin of attack. Now, are we all doomed? You're making it sound like we're all doomed now. I don't <laughs> think we're doomed. <laughs> So it depends on which... It's which, more difficult, though. Well, it depends on which model you believe in. Right. Uh, so there's the traditional Web 2.0 model. You're going to quickly find out I'm not a huge fan of the Web 3.0 model, but that's okay. That's okay because there is a push for decentralized uh, uh, authentication, and hopefully a lot of problems will get solved out of this. But in the older model, the 2.0, the monolithic model that we're, that we're familiar with, things are actually getting better. We just right. need to be more consistent whether that's how we uh, protect things how we uh, have different uh, applications how we actually go about auditing there's that audit word yeah uh, <laughs> that nobody likes but how we actually uh, uh, obtain that information and just make sure people are doing what they need to be doing whether it's through automation or through policy or other terrible things like now that. you told me some cool stuff including that that story about the not Bitcoin. Which which one is it? Not Bit uh, uh, Dogecoin. Dogecoin. I yeah. mean, that's 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 unbelievable. It's fantastic. You got any more cool stories? Uh, ooh. Uh, so uh, uh, I think uh, one of the other uh, really interesting piece is that we had a uh, recently we had a very large energy company, so Fortune 100, that came to us and said, "Hey, um, we need you to do a, a this physical pen test. We want you to come in, the, uh, see if you can f find a way in. We don't think you're going to do it. The last guys didn't do it. The last guys before them didn't do it. Find a way in." And uh, sure enough, this was only weeks ago that sure enough, uh, here we are, we're pulling badge readers off the wall. We are, uh, <laughs> you know where we're going yeah, with this. Yeah, yeah. They, they put way too much reliance into badge readers. Wow. So, so I think that we got it, let's, let's put it that way. But uh, the, the point of the story is uh, layers, uh, sorry, defense comes in layers and you want that layered defense, meaning they put way too much uh, uh, trust in their, uh, their, their badge readers. And once you bypass the badge readers, that's all you need to do. So it's a perfect oh. example of layer defenses, right. have multiple opportunities. We, we had uh, our, our co-founder, Jordan, uh, was actually in costume. He was wearing a uh, HID uh, shirt. Yeah. So it looked like he belonged to the badge company. He pulled off one of the badges of uh, readers in the middle of the day and was asking people passing through the that particular entrance, hey, can you scan your badge here? They did it. Oh, man. They did it. Nobody yeah. asked, what are you doing? Why are you here? I know. Uh, uh, nothing. He just, they trusted him because he had the shirt. 
Yep. That's not enough. I used to put people at, at Fox and Disney, we had people at the badge reader sections. And we could have had a self-serve turnstile. We could have had a sally port, a lot of things. I said, nope, we're having a guard there. It costs extra money. Yeah, but the guard's going to pop up the machine, look at you, look at the badge, look at the computer. At least we have some two-way authentication on it. If and your behavior, too. And, and see if you are acting not like that employee we know about, right? So that, I don't, I'm not surprised that that happened. Well, that they did have a guard. So going, oh, through, no. the front door, going through the front door wasn't, uh, was not a viable option. Going through all the other doors, perfectly easy. Um, so, but uh, oftentimes also, and I like the physical aspect because it's, it's more tangible, it's easier to, right. to relate to. Um, oftentimes you find out nobody's watching the cameras. That nobody, no, they, nobody they can't. It's too much data. Well, yeah. it, it is, yeah. it is. But what about in the middle of the night when nobody should be there? Well, they should have video management software, but that doesn't know it. I mean, it's, I right. get it. It's over-reliance on one That's control. Right. That's it. And complacency that kind of falls into the, uh, into the, it comes with it. Excellent. Chris Wall, thanks for coming on the show, buddy. Good luck with your lecture. That was fantastic. This may be the last show. I'm going to take a chance to see this last show of the, of the I, uh, I think so. conference. RVA Sec 2022 Richmond. We'll be back next year. We've been invited back next year. Good luck to you, my friend. All right. Good to meet you. Okay. All right. Good to have you.